Hello and welcome to Real to. Is it dark in here? Lumos. Ah, there we go. Much better. Oh, hi, Jacob. Hi, Patrick. Oh, sorry. It was way too dark in here. Okay, not wrong, but still, that spell is bright. I said sorry. Here, let, let's do it over again. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. Let, let me do this this time. Okay. You almost blinded me the last time. Okay, fine. Hello, and welcome to Real to Real, the movie review program put on entirely from the video production students at Hennepin Technical College. Today, we're reviewing the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire movie. Wait, Harry Potter? <gasps> oh, wait, I'm not dead. Patrick Erickson, the boy who also lived. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, okay, uh, before Jacob gets sent to Azkaban, let's watch the trailer. to make an announcement. Hogwarts Castle will not only be your home this year, but home to some very special guests as well. Please welcome our friends from the north, the proud sons of Durmstrang. And now, the lovely ladies of Bo Battens. I was just wondering if maybe he wanted to go to the ball with me. Mr. Weasley, place your right hand on my waist. What? Is that Hermione Granger with Victor Crump? You're fraternizing with the enemy. The enemy? Hogwarts has been chosen to host a legendary event, the Triwizard Tournament. And now, the champion selection! Victor Krupp! Fleur Delacour! Cedric Diggory! <laughs> Harry Potter! How did you do? I didn't put my name in that cup. I don't want eternal glory. It's mad I'm moody. Father Kedavra. The killing curse. Only one person is known to have survived it. And he's sitting in this room. People die in this tournament. The devils are inside the walls. So he's coming closer. I can feel him. The Dark Lord shall rise again. Is it Voldemort? Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is directed by Mike Newell and starred David Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Emma Watson as Hermione Granger, Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley, and Ralph Fiennes as Lord Voldemort. The movie takes place in Great Britain in a magical castle called Hogwarts. This is the fourth part of the story, with the first three movies being a bunch of stories about Harry Potter and his friends while Lord Voldemort tries to come back to, to his physical form to kill Harry Potter once and for all. So now let's talk about the Goblet of Fire. As we said before, this is the fourth movie in the eight-part series. Yes, there's seven books, but we don't talk about that. Weird dark things have been happening. Harry is having visions of Voldemort and his old supporters called the Death Eaters. The school year starts, and the school headmaster, Dumbledore, states that this year at Hogwarts, they'll be hosting a legendary tournament where three students from three wizarding schools compete for glory and, of course, money. There are supposed to be three wizard students competing, but somehow Harry's name got in the mix and was chosen to compete as the fourth champion. With the help of his friends and a little bit of plot armor, Harry did quite well in the difficult challenges and ended up grabbing the Triwizard Cup, which was the trophy for the winner. Happy end of the story, right? No. The cup teleported Harry to a graveyard that he had been seeing in his visions, where he got trapped and forced to watch as Voldemort supporters did a ritual to bring back the Dark Lord back into his original body. 
Harry narrowly escaped and got back to the school, where he found that one of his professors at Hogwarts put his name into the goblet and rigging it so that Harry would be chose, chosen as the, fourth, um, as the fourth competitor and get teleported into the graveyard. The professor fled, and that is how this movie ended. But now Voldemort is back. This sets up the story for the rest of the series. That was a lot. It's a very deep and interesting story. But you know what else is? Revealing the behind-the-scenes facts of the movie. Revelio. <laughs> First thing in the morning, we arrive at the studios where usually the the ads are, are waiting for us to arrive, and um, you know then we go to breakfast. I'm stealing some orange juice. So, what do you think of his uh, scars? Does it look manly? Very manly. Yeah. Very manly. Rugged and dirty, and it's good. It's very difficult what we're doing today. Yeah. Hawking. Yeah. So, is this what you guys do you know, in your downtime? Card tricks? Uh, and... pff, we do everything, really. <laughs> everything and anything to keep ourselves amused. We got involved into um, magic tricks with cards. So, you know, everyone started you know, learning how to do magic tricks, and we were showing to each other, which was a great laugh. And there are the four kings. <sighs> magic. This film had a budget of $150 million and made a profit of over $896 million, which is amazing, considering that this is the fourth movie and it still made that much. Surprisingly, this was the first installment in the franchise where the movie did not open up with a scene involving Harry Potter. Also, did you know that the dress for Emma Watson took so many attempts to create that the director had to tell the designers off for constantly making dresses? They probably should have spent more time on it though, since Emma Watson ended up tripping when walking downstairs, which, surprisingly, didn't leave any injuries. The underwater scenes for this movie were long but not difficult, according to Radcliffe as they had regulators to allow them to breathe underwater. I heard too that Radcliffe alone had a total of over 41 hours underwater. But at one point, Radcliffe had accidentally made a signal that he was drowning, which sent the crew into a panic, which stopped production for the entire day. Sadly, between Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, the actor for Dumbledore uh, changed to a new one and who refused to read any of the books in order to give his own feel to how Dumbledore should be. This made him very different from how he was in the first three movies and in the books. Well, it looks like it's about that time we get on to our review, but before that, let's warp on to the commercial. We really try and keep track of what's going on in the world as far as what are the trends. And so when a student comes here, they're learning the marketing aspects of video production with turnkey. So they learn how to write, storyboard, and capture video, set lights, set audio, and then they learn how to edit everything from start to finish. We believe that we are providing a transformative educational experience. It's hands-on, it's project-based, it's portfolio-based, it's based on real-world industry experiences. They take deep dives on all these, you know, a lot of the classes are tiered, so you get an entry-level course and then an advanced, and then, you know, you hit your capstone projects where you're bringing them all together, so it, it's nice the way that they structure it and help you get a deeper understanding of stuff that you may or may not have thought you already had a good handle on. Harry Potter is a big franchise, with it having a total of eight movies and all of them being two hours or more. So what do I think about the fourth movie? To be honest, there's nothing I really dislike about this movie. I like the pacing in this movie and most scenes they use progress the story. I will say that one problem with the Harry Potter franchise is that for me, they don't show much magic spells. 
Sure, they show lots of magical creatures and items, but with spells, not so much. And this movie is not much different. But with the parts that make up for this is the fantasy creatures and the Triwizard Tournament aspect. This movie makes an impact as it reveals Voldemort's true form and not some face on the back of someone's head, which gives a ramp up to future movies as now they, uh, as now there is a serious threat constantly looming over when Voldemort plans to strike. This movie really, is, this movie is really good and overall one of my top Harry Potter movies on my list. But with that being said, I'm giving it a four out of five mainly because I desire a bit more magic in a magic movie, but it does do well even without it. What's your review, Patrick? <laughs> well, if you can't tell from this episode, I absolutely love the Harry Potter series. I have both read the books and watched the movies several times over, and I have loved them every single time. Really, my only gripe about this movie is the cheesy camera work and acting. The parts where they are trying to make it be dramatic just turned out being funny. The special effects were on point, the story is fantastic, maybe hard to follow at times, but still really good. I absolutely love the scene in the graveyard where Voldemort comes back. It's by far the best scene in the movie. The, uh, from the lighting, to the music, to the acting, it was just perfect. Uh, this is a story I wish I could experience for the first time again. Goblet of Fire is also the first movie that a character closer to Harry actually dies. Harry and the other Hogwarts champion, Cedric Diggory, both grabbed the cup at the same time and both got teleported to the graveyard, where Cedric was very quickly killed. That really made Voldemort's evil show. He was willing to straight up kill one of the students without even giving him a chance. You can't get much more evil than that. I would highly recommend this series to anyone. There are so many cool stories and good life lessons thrown in there. But now, what do I rate this movie? I hate to say it, but I'm giving The Goblet of Fire a 4 out of 5 reels. There's just too many little things with bad acting, bad timing, bad camera work that I didn't feel right giving it a 5. If we were reviewing the entire series, however, it would be a 5. And I'd be trying to make a new graphic to be 8 out of 5 reels. But for this movie alone, I give it a 4. With these games coming to an end, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube and hit that bell to be notified of all future streams. Also, give us a good old follow on Facebook while you're at it to view our streams as well. This has been... Real to Real. Knox.